So great. SpaceX just unveiled Starship Flight 3 launch date. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! -hoo! Now, it's time to count down to that very special event to witness the launch of the first Starship into orbit. So how exactly will Ship 28 reach that milestone? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. On March 5, SpaceX made a stir with a surprising announcement about the Flight 3 launch date, which is going to start on March 14, which means we have just over a week left. Luckily, the full-stacked Starship's recent wet dress rehearsal, the final ground test ahead of Flight 3, was a success. Indeed, on Monday, March 4, everything involving the progress toward Flight 3 was faster than ever with the venting vapors like the breath of a sleeping white dragon. The test started off with a loading of over 10 million pounds of propellant consisting of cryogenic methane and oxygen on Starship and Super Heavy. Then the countdown simulated to T10 seconds achieving a flight-like scenario. The propellant loading rate this time is very impressive after all the tank farm upgrades. Although SpaceX has not yet given the details of its current loading speed, if it is as predicted several months ago, they are able to reach roughly 5,000 tons of fuel in 45 minutes. So incredible! The outcome did not let us down. SpaceX's next Starship to fly has passed a critical fueling test, setting the stage for a highly anticipated third launch attempt of the world's biggest rocket. The next milestone will be the launch license from the FAAD stack to arm the flight termination system, and then lift off. Starship Flight 3, preparing for launch, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk wrote in a post on X sharing SpaceX's photos of the fueling test on March 4. SpaceX shared the series of stunning photos of the fueling test in a separate X post. With the upcoming flight, Elon Musk aims at the number of 80% of Starship's possibility to reach orbit. It means that Ship 28 is expected to be the first prototype to complete SpaceX's long-term dream. This is totally feasible as its predecessor, Ship 25 achieved a velocity of roughly 24,000 km per hour in Flight 2, helping it to reach outer space and nearly completing its full-duration burn. So, to make that dream come true, how fast must Ship 28 travel? In order to leave the Earth's atmosphere and establish an orbit around the planet, a rocket has to travel very fast. In fact, it has to reach and maintain a speed of approximately 28,000 kilometers per hour or 7.9 kilometers per second to stay in orbit. Rockets need to achieve these high speeds since the Earth's gravity extends for thousands of miles into space and will eventually drag all objects back to its surface without any form of countermeasure. For a spacecraft, this comes in the shape of forward momentum or speed. A spacecraft, satellite, or any other object uses a combination of its forward momentum, speed, and the Earth's gravitational pull to remain in orbit around the planet. They need both forces to stay airborne. A spacecraft traveling in a specific orbit around the Earth is always flying toward the horizon at a speed of 7.9 kilometers per second. At the same time, the Earth's gravity is pulling the craft down. By combining these two forces, a spacecraft can stay at a fixed altitude while orbiting the planet. Since the Earth is round, the vehicle will start to pull away from the Earth if it travels any faster. If it travels any slower, the planet's gravity will start to pull it towards the surface. In short, Ship 28 just needs to improve its speed by 4,000 km per hour to be successful. But the key point here is how should Starship be upgraded to increase its velocity? The first step is always to determine why you failed in the previous attempt. As SpaceX explained, the accident on November 18, during the second test flight of Booster 9 and Ship 25, occurred for two reasons. The booster, RUD, is due to the filter blockage where liquid oxygen is supplied to the engine, leading to a loss of inlet pressure in engine oxidizer turbo pumps that eventually resulted in one engine failing in a way that resulted in the loss of the vehicle. Also, can't help but say a fire broke out on board the Starship, which interrupted the connection between the control on board computer and the critical components of the ship, and this forced it to self-destruct. At one time, Elon Musk said on this occasion that there was too much fuel and too little payload on board. The excess propellant is to simulate how Starship would react to the real payload on board. 
they could have chosen not to release that fuel if the safety regulations did not put a limit to the maximum amount of propellant remaining upon ship splashed down. This really matters because that amount of propellant will cause a real bomb explosion in the sea. So, it would be better to explode it in the sky. The next up is to fix those problems and strengthen the reliability of the important components. As a result of the mishap investigation for the November explosion, seven corrective actions were pinpointed for the booster. Of course, the modification to the tank filtration system is a priority, and then measures to minimize sloshing. During Flight 2, there was the movement of liquid propellants inside boosters' fuel tanks during the vehicle's acceleration, deceleration, or maneuvers. It's called fuel sloshing. At that point, the liquid fuel will experience inertia, creating waves or oscillations within the tank. This sloshing effect can impact the rocket's stability and control. Reducing slosh-induced disturbances is crucial for maintaining the rocket's trajectory and stability, especially in critical phases such as launch, orbit insertion, or maneuvers. In this case, engineers tend to add the extra anti-slosh baffles, and the SpaceX team can also make the boostback maneuver itself less aggressive. Okay, now let's move to the ship. According to the 10 additional corrective measures to be addressed prior to Flight 3, some of them involve the enhancement of the ship's ability by eliminating all possible sources of leakage. Thus, three new pipes in the aft section of the ship will be introduced. They could be connected directly to the liquid oxygen tank, so the discharged oxygen would flow through the pipes to the outside instead of back inside the engine bay. Additionally, the transfer from a hydraulic steering system for the vehicle's Raptor engines to an entirely electric system also removes potential sources of flammability. It's safe to say that success in reaching orbit in the upcoming flight should be compulsory because SpaceX has many deadlines after that. First of all, it's about Artemis 3. Artemis 3 requires the Starship human landing system to be ready before 2026, and this poses many challenges. Even when the ability to make Starship safely to Earth's orbit is off the table, SpaceX must hash out how to get the vehicle enough propellant to travel out to the moon, a feat that is expected to involve at least 10 refueling flights, according to Jessica Jensen, SpaceX's Vice President of Customer Operations and Integration. Not only that, the ability to land on the lunar surface is also very noteworthy. Two recent consecutive incidents involving two U.S. lunar landers including Astrobotics Peregrine Lander and the IM-1 Lunar Lander, clearly reflect the difficulty of the journey back to the moon. For that reason, SpaceX must consider carefully modifying its landing gear to ensure crew safety on such missions. Artemis 3's completion will make way for Artemis 4, which is expected to launch no earlier than September 2028. This mission will mark the first time that HLSE's docking system will be applied in Artemis. Given that, an Orion spacecraft with four astronauts will dock at the Lunar Gateway Space Station, install a new module on the Gateway, and conduct the second lunar landing of the Artemis program. The mission ends with the astronauts boarding a Starship HLS vehicle that has also docked with the station. However, the issue here is the huge gap in weight between the Gateway and Starship lunar lander. The mass limit of the Gateway's visiting vehicle is just 14 tons while Starship would likely weigh at least 100-200 tons more than the entire gateway. Both NASA and SpaceX tested the HLS docking system in late February at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Although not much information has been unveiled, we believe that they have found the best way for this matter and the test's outcome is pretty well. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.